In this video, we're going to talk about uh, design. And this is called the classical design. Um, and we're going to talk about the steps in this video, as well as the different options you have as you're designing a solution. Uh, and then in future videos, we'll have examples, specific example for each one of the cases we want to explore. So let's go ahead and uh, um, talk about the uh, what is design. Um, we have talked before about the fact that uh, design, basically you have a product. In this case, uh, if it's in a classroom environment, it would be a schematic given to you, but in a, in a, in a laboratory environment or a class uh, or a real environment, you would have a device um, that you have, product or device or schematic that you're going to use for the class exercise but you hope to have the implementation. And then when you do analysis, you want to take it from here and the end of the arrow is going to be, you're going to have a description, a functional description, okay? And typically what we do uh, for doing the functional description of a sequential machine, a finite state machine, uh, what we do, we do a state diagram. So state diagram will be kind of a way for us to uh, describe what the functionality is because sometimes it's very difficult to put those functionalities in words. And again, for in the classroom environment, we schematic is as far as we get, but we actually will hope to implement it as well once we have the schematic and test it and all of that kind of stuff. So the, if this is analysis, and if you recall in earlier video, we say this is a five-step process. Well, um, the, the opposite of this, opposite direction if somebody gives me a finite fun functional description in English word or they give me a state diagram or one of the equivalent other ways of describing such as time timing diagram or uh, uh, ASM chart or some of the other scheme my job is to as a designer would be to take it and design a schematic and then implement and test the device and this is called the design plus process and the design is a seven-step seven process. The last couple of steps of the, the additional steps on top of analysis are this build and test. Now, and so design for most part is going to be just going in the reverse direction, a reverse step of the analysis with some modification. Here, here is a complete list of that seven step and a description of the seven step. I want to take a few minutes and go through that as part of this video before, before we get into the next videos where we're going to talk about um, actual design. So, um, so let's, let's walk through this thing. The very first step you do, you organize the design specification. What does that mean? That basically, and, and, and uh, for us, means that somebody walks up to you and say, design me a device, a shift register, a binary counter, a lock mechanism, or whatever, control light for the, for the traffic light, or, or whatever it is, or, or a vending machine, or whatever it is they want us to design. They give us to award. One of the first thing you want to do, you want to, you want to reduce those descriptions in war to a concrete, logical process where there's no ambiguity left on that. And the way we do that, most of the time, the, the easiest place to go and the most complete place to go from description of a design requirement for us would be after we've done this, after we've done, of course, the system diagram. And this system diagram, if you recall, is basically uh, what are the inputs and what are the outputs of this device. Then the next step would be to define what are the different states. So doing a state diagram would be the next step. Once you've done the state diagram, you've defined what the sta states are and what the inputs, how many inputs we have, how many states we have, do we have different kinds of outputs and all of that. Once that whole state diagram is done, then we are done with step one. So all of that, all of this fits into step one. Step two would be determine the number of flip-flop based on the number of state. And that gets kind of, uh, we have two options here. So this is the first time we run into having options. So here we have an option. Um, one is called full encoding. Um, 
and the other one is called one hot encoding. Which the, 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 dif the difference between the two are basically um, this one allows us to do all combinations of the flip-flop output. This only allows us to have only one flip-flop can be a uh, uh, fun state which is state variable which is the flip-flop output can be equal to one only one can be equal to one everything all the other all the other must be zero so let's say we did this tape diagram and we have four states as an example four states that's the example we do if i'm doing if i'm doing um, full encoding i'm going to have two state variable right two to the power of two gives us four so i will have y1 y0 because one state can be referred to as zero zero another one as zero one another one as one zero another one as one one and but in the case of one hard encoding i have to i have to have four so i have to have as many as many flip-flops as I have um, states because I can, each state is represented by one flip-flop output being high, all the other one being zero. So the possible cases I have 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 0. So you might ask at this point, why would I want to do it? Sounds like such a waste. Well. The practicality of the thing is that if my output can be directly tied to y0, and so when y0 is uh, uh, high, I can take an action, and I don't need to come up with any combinational logic to create the output, um, that not requiring combination logic is uh, space saving on the chip, and because it's very costly and expensive to... Um, to um, in, 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 a, in a chip to do combinational logic because of the routing of the thing, rather routing of the traces and connecting the, uh, the various kind of chips. Um, the, the semiconductors are much more uh, adapted or easier to build lots of things that are regular pattern and flip-flops are great we know for a fact we can put you know 16 18 billion of them uh, 16 or 32 billion of them on a single chip a size of a core uh, half an inch by half an inch so that's that's the reason that's uh, one hot encoding even exists uh, we're going to have an example of one hot encoding but full encoding is the kind of our default scheme as we go through this for a learn from our learning exercises so this is a first option you had so you have an option of choosing to implement it as a full uh, encoding or you can choose to implement it as a one hot encoding and um, so so you that's that's the first place you have to decide am i going to do this or am i going to do this as a next step once you've decided how many you need then you got to figure out, okay, if I have this, then what kind of flip-flop do I want to use, okay? So now I have the number of flip-flops if I'm going full encoding. For this example, I need two. If I go one hard encoding, I need four, but I still have not made the determination which one of these do I want to go. Well, uh, you have a choice of th uh, three flip-flops. We're going to focus on three flip-flop. You're going to focus at D. Um, GT and JK flip-flop. Now, unless there is a specific reason you need, you want to use something other than D flip-flop, D flip-flop is most of the time the default. Nobody's forcing you to use anything else. We use D flip-flop. Some, some cases, T flip-flop and JK flip-flop could lend a hand and reduce the amount of logic you have to add because of their very nature that they have a Q and Q not option available. But for most cases, the flip-flops are relatively low cost to build and they're very easy to use. Basically, whatever is on D travels over to Y plus immediately. So that's more or less the, um, the um, option, desired option. So the next few steps is best done through an example, but I'll go ahead and go through it. So, so, so just to make sure the next option you have is... Uh, the next option you have is to 
select the flip-flop you want to use and here you have three options you can select a D you can select a T flip-flop or you can select a JK flip-flop just to be sure if you solve a problem if you solve a problem you have literally two options full encoding or one hard encoding and then which flip-flop you want to use and so at the same design, the same state machine, state uh, diagram, same description of the problem can be solved six different ways. Full encoding, D flip-flop, T flip-flop, JK, and one hard encoding, D flip-flop, T flip-flop, and JK. So you have six different ways of solving the same problem. Okay. Um, and then once you've done that, you do the present state next state. Once you've done the present state next state, you use each one of the columns of the present state to figure out what what D is supposed to be, what T sub, or if you have a D flip flop, or all the Ds which are called excitation input is. Use a Carnot map to minimize them, as well as minimizing what the output equations are, and then you basically draw the schematic that completes that. That brings us to the end of this uh, presentation. The goal of this presentation was to expose you to the seven design steps and uh, um, then talk about the fact that when somebody gives you a design you possibly can solve that in six different ways uh, two, op two, two options the first two options you have is uh, do I go full encoding do I go one hard encoding for each one of those selections you have three other possibilities of which flip-flop you so <coughs> So we could do have a six uh, separate um, solution that are all equally good for this. That brings us to the end of this particular presentation of introducing um, fine, synchronous finite state machine classical design process.